For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. For he has brought us a mighty long way. And we thank you for that. Praise the Lord. Good morning, Resurrection Baptist Church family and friends. Welcome to Communion Sunday. Praise the Lord. It's just good to be able to come in and remember the things that Christ did for us on the cross. Thank God he ain't still on the cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ain't you glad he came down? I know I am. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know about y'all this morning. I feel a little pain, but I feel good still. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Yes, it is. Oh, man. And being in the house of the Lord called God's house. And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of the Lord. And God is with us this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm so glad about it. I don't know about y'all. I'm glad about it. Hallelujah. Oh, we serve an awesome God. A mighty awesome God. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name this morning. It may be raining cloudy outside, but we have a cloudy hill leaning over us that will carry us for the rest of our lives, even into eternity. Oh, praise the Lord. Wow, praise the Lord. Yeah, he is good. How applicable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. My soul longed, yea, even faint for the course of the Lord. My heart, my flesh cried out for the living God. For the Lord God is the sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. And Lord, help us just to do that. Because we can't do it by ourselves. Praise the Lord. Amen. Go ahead on. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank God for the word. Thank God for this day that he has blessed us with. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me. Just take a moment and think about it what he's done for you. I can't thank you for what he's done for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you can't tell it like I can tell it what he's done for me.
because of the shed blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We have been redeemed from the curse of death. Thank you, Father. From the curse of the law. Thank you. Because of the blood, we are victorious. Yeah. Because of who he is. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Not anything good in and of ourselves. Thank you, Lord. Simply because of who you are, Lord God. Thank you, Father. You are worthy of the glory. Worthy of the honor. Because
restore yourself. Praise God, praise God. I'll be reading this morning, Matthew chapter 5, starting at verse 1. Amen, amen. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into the mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came to him. Yes. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, so they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which hunger and thirst yes. after righteousness, so they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed are those the waitress, those which are persecuted for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Bless ye when men shall revive you yeah. and per persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Yeah. For great is your reward in heaven. Yeah. For so they persecuted the prophets which were before you. Let the word permeate in your heart, fill your spirit, and like I said, it's homework. Just go out there and talk to one person this week about Jesus. Amen. Just one person out of all the people you meet. Come on, man. Praise God. Amen. 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 <clears throat>
through this month this morning, Lord. Oh, Lord, all the, the shut-ins, Lord, that this, this morning can't come out, Lord, this morning. If they hear my voice, Lord, bless them on this morning, Father God. In the name of Jesus, have your way, Lord. Continue to bless resurrection, Lord. And bless the partnership that we are coming into gold right now, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let it be a blessing to your house, oh, Father God, and your kingdom, oh, yeah. God. Just have your way on this morning, Lord. Continue to bless our leadership here at Resurrection Baptist Church, Father God. Oh, Lord, continue to keep it out doors open, Father God. No matter what the crowd look like, Lord, we come to praise you and lift up the name of Jesus Amen. and have church before you, God, and praise your name, lift up your name, Lord, because mm. you're worthy, whether it's 10 or 10,000, God, we come to praise your name and lift you up this morning Amen. because you're good, God. You're yeah. a great God. You're an awesome God. You're a mighty God. And Lord, we just say we adore and love you this morning, Father God. Continue to watch over us, Lord. Go with us and stand by us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God. Praise God. From 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. October the 17th, they will be giving away fresh fruits and vegetables. So please um, participate in that. On October the 15th, 
at 9 a.m. will be our new members um, class. Amen. 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 I am not a new member, but I'm very much interested in joining that class on October the 15th. And if it, even if you've been here for a while, please join us in um, in that class. I'm sure that it will um, brighten us and acknowledge us all Amen. of God's will. Also, are there any birthdays or anniversaries October the second through October the eighth in the house? Because I know you don't have an anniversary. October the 8th. October the 8th is your birthday? October the 8th is my birthday. Amen. Okay. October the 8th is his birthday. My Lord. On the same day. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. October the 20th is his birthday. Oh, okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Happy birthday to you. And I do have cards for you guys this morning. Any visitors at all? No visitors? Well, I just would like to acknowledge my sister back there in the light blue. Bless her. Amen. Glad to see you in the house. And so thank you, and may God continue to bless you all. And that's our church. Uh, we focus on be renewed, be revived, and be restored. Have a blessed day. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Somebody say amen this morning. Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a hand clap this morning. Hallelujah. God is so good. He's so worthy to be praised. Amen. I do have a couple more announcements I want to add to that real quick. Um, as she stated, please keep your, uh, your uh, sister Woodard and uh, Brother Caldwell in your prayers for the loss of their family. Amen. Um, she will be letting us know uh, when the funeral arrangements will be made. And as she stated, the new members class will be on October the 15th, 2022 at 10 o'clock a.m. here live. Oh, okay, 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock a.m., it's gonna be 10. My wife got on me about that nine o'clock number, so I had to, I had to listen, so, <laughs> amen. 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock a.m., it's gonna be live here, and we're also going to be on Zoom, amen. We're gonna be on Zoom. Now, I've made it extremely easy for us to get on Zoom, people. You go to our website, you click the button, and Zoom comes up. We did it last night, we got right on with no problem. You go to your website, www.rbc-dc.org. You'll see, join Zoom right up top. You click that and you'll get right on Zoom. And Zoom is important, people, because we'll be able to talk to each other. You'll be able to raise your hands. You'll be able to ask questions. And I won't be lecturing you, amen? So let's try that again. Um, um, uh, and, uh, again, the easiest way to get on Zoom is through our website. Um, uh, the only thing I want to uh, talk about this morning, um, as you notice, I don't know if you've been downstairs, there's been some changes in the fellowship hall, and some more changes are coming. We should be getting painters in here on, hopefully this week, to repaint the entire fellowship hall, and we're partnering with uh, family, uh, 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 Far Southeast Family Strengthening Collaborative um, to help to uh, uh, deal with the youth and deal with people in our community in Ward A, praise be to God. Um, amen, amen. Um, so, Keep that in prayer. Keep that lifted up. We want this to go well. Um, we want Resurrection Baptist Church as the hub in, in the community. We want to be known for some great things. Amen. For helping our people out here in Lord A. That's what we're all about. That's where I live. That's where we live. Amen. We live right here. We're always talking about our people. Well, let's go in and help them if we can. Amen. All right. That's all I have for right now. Um, why don't we greet each other in the Lord? Amen. Yes, brother. Amen.
somebody say amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You want to, you want to make sure that you bless God the way he has blessed you. Amen. You want to make sure that you bless God the way that he's blessed you. If God has blessed you, you ought to be given. Amen. You ought to be given. Now let me just say one thing about giving too. Um, if we, if you were employed through Resurrection Baptist Church, if you are employed through this church, I don't care who you are, if you're employed, you ought to be given to this church. All right? Come on, somebody say amen. You ought, if you are employed, I want everybody to listen to me now. Musicians, uh, whoever you are, uh, 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 cleaning people, uh, uh, contractors, well, whoever you are, if Resurrection is blessing you, you ought to bless Resurrection. Somebody say amen. Come on now. Praise be to God. That's what ought to be happening. Praise be to God. Who, and me too. No matter who it is. All employees. Praise be to God. Amen. Our eternal destination is life everlasting with him. That's right. You can't get any more victorious than that. Well. Hallelujah. So we've been singing about God um, giving us the victory and having victory in his name and him being a mighty God. Just continuing this theme that victory belongs to Jesus. Mm. Yeah. And if we belong to Jesus, then victory belongs to us. Amen. 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 Praise God. Stand against the Lord. 
chapter 11. If you will stand in the presence of God when we read his word, you find in the Old Testament that many streets stood when the word of God was read. Praise be to God. We stand for many things in this life. Let's stand for the infallible word of God. Praise be to God. If you're able, if you're able, hallelujah. When you get there, you can say amen. We're at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. Very familiar scripture especially for today we want to talk about what we do every month which is communion the word of god reads for i receive from the lord that which i also deliver to you that the lord jesus on the same night which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks praise be to god he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me in the same manner he also took this cup is to do covenant in my blood. This do often, uh, do, this, do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Would you be seated in the house of God and prepare yourselves to go before the throne of grace? Hallelujah. Father. We thank you once again on this communion Sunday, Father, as we gather here to hear a word from you. Father God, Christians worldwide gather at this sacred time, this sacred time, Lord God, to, to hear from you. Father God, use me this morning to speak to your people today. Save a soul today, Lord God. Remove from their eyes the scales that impair their vision, keeping them unable to see the need of a Savior. Father God, we're asking that their hearts be convicted, Lord God, as they repent and return back to you. Father, we're asking, I pray, your purpose be made known by the clear preaching of your word. And the application is right for such a time as this. Now, God, I'm asking you to move me out of the way. Remove my ego, my wants, and my wishes. Remove any unknown desire for a platform and influence as you hide me behind the cross. Now let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy eyes, my Lord, my Savior, in Jesus' name, amen. For a few moments this morning, brothers and sisters, I want to preach on the topic, the message in the mill. The message in the mill. For over 2,000 years, 
maybe even more, the Church of Jesus Christ has been celebrating and observing what we know as Communion Sunday and the Lord of the Lord's Supper, as many call it, as we will today. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, it's an elaborate celebration and ornate affair that dominates the entire service, and then other times it is observed at the end of the worship service, as we do. And while some churches observe it every Sunday or every Lord's Day, here at Resurrection Baptist Church, we observe it every first Sunday or monthly or 12 times a year or more if we need to at people's homes and that sort of thing. But however, however it is observed and or however it is commemorated, the, the important thing, brothers and sisters, for us to know as those to, to involve is to remember why they are doing what they are doing. What does it all mean? We need to take the time, brothers and sisters, this morning to look not only at the meal, but the message that the meal preaches. Amen. Considering it is Communion Sunday, this morning affords us such an opportunity. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, every time we gather, every time we get together, the Bible declares, do not forsake the gathering of yourselves. So, so every time that you and I get together and partake of the Lord's Supper, we see, we experience, and participate in the living illustration of God's message. Yeah. And that message, brothers and sisters, is the message of hope. That message, brothers and sisters, is a message of love. That message, brothers and sisters, is a message of salvation. And with a message of hope, of love, of sacrifice for every person in this room and those that are watching us via the internet. Now let's look at these verses together today and hear the message in the meal. The first things we see in verse 23 and 24 is a message in the pain of Jesus' sacrifice. In Luke 22, 19 and 20, Jesus took some bread, brothers and sisters, and he gave thanks for the bread. I want you to know this morning, we ought to be giving thanks for everything that we put in our mouths. I don't care if it's a glass of water, I don't care if it's a loaf of bread, I don't care what it is, whatever you put in your mouth, you ought to thank God. Amen. Many of us don't eat. God, he, God, he broke it and he, and he gave thanks, he broke it and he gave it to the apostles and he told them, he said, take is, uh, take this as my body which I am giving for you. Do this and every time you do, remember as a memorial to in remembrance of me uh, in the same way. Yes. After supper, after they had eaten, Jesus took the cup and said, this cup or this cup that is poured out, brothers and sisters, is a new agreement, a new covenant, a binding relationship between God and his people that begins with and is established by or that is sealed with in my blood which is poured out for you and for me. When Jesus refers to his broken body, brothers and sisters, he's referring to the pain uh, that he suffered, uh, that he was destined to suffer, amen, when he was on the cross. He was beaten for us. Luke uh, tells us, 63 tells us, that the men guarding Jesus made fun of him and, and they beat him and they covered their, his eyes and, and, and so that he could not see them. And, and then they hit him and, he, and they said to him, be a prophet and tell us who hit you. He was scourged, says that. And that means that, he would, he, that they beat him until he had deep cuts and, and his back looked like a, a freshly plowed field. He was spat upon. I don't know about you this morning, but one of the nastiest, violent things that a person can do to me is spit on me. Good God Almighty. He was, he was spat on. The, God was spat on. And he was mocked. They mocked the man. They said, you, you, know, they, you know what mocked me? They, they made fun of him. They poked at him. They, 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 they was messing with the brother. Matthew 27 uh, tells us that Pilate's soldiers took Jesus into the governor's palace and all soldiers gathered around him. There was between 400 and 600 soldiers and, and it took all Jesus' clothes and put a red robe on him and made a crown from thorny branches and, and, and put it on his head and they put a stick in the right hand and they bowed before him making fun. They said, we salute you, king. King of the Jews. They was playing and they was playing. And you know what it is to be played? They was playing Jesus. They was playing the Son of God. They was playing the King of the universe. They were playing them. They was not know. They did not know what they were doing. And then his beard was plucked out. 
as foretold in Isaiah 50 and 6 when he said, I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who plucked out my beard. I did not hide my face from shame and splitting. I know that some of you people uh, get waxed and you get that wax thing going on. I, 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 I've never done it and I, I probably never will. And, and, and from what I can tell, it hurts when you put that mud or that whatever that tape, whatever it is that you put on me and snatch that hair off out your system. But the good news about that is they do it all at one time. They snatch Jesus' beard out with their own hands. He was stripped naked. And then he was nailed to the cross and crucified. And so this cup to which Jesus refers to is the suffering that he endured. It was the cup that is filled with your vile sins. It was the cup that was said that's filled with your cussing, with your smoking, with your drinking, with your fornicating. That cup was filled with that. And not just my cup, but every man and woman that lived on the planet Earth. Jesus was handed a cup of wrath. He was handed a cup of bitterness with the expectation from the Father that he drank it all. And he did. Amen. For you and for me. Amen. He didn't necessarily want to. In fact, Jesus said, let this cup pass by me. He expressed the, the, the natural human desire to avoid the pain, but nevertheless, let thy will be done. I want you to know this morning, whatever you're going through, I don't care if you're limping, I don't care if you're crawling, I don't care if it's raining, I don't care if it's slowing, I don't care what's going on in your life. Nevertheless, let thy will be done. He did the will of the Father. What about you, brothers and sisters? Whose will are you doing? Stop doing your wife's will. Stop doing your husband's will. Stop doing your boyfriend's will. Stop doing your girlfriend's will. Stop doing the world's will and do the will of God. Amen. You see, the salvation that we enjoy in Jesus Christ today is free for the taking, but it certainly was not cheap. There was a price that was paid for you and me. There was a price that was paid. Somebody needs to say amen this morning. There was a price to pay for you and I. Amen. The cup was also a new agreement. Jeremiah 31 and 34 tells us what that agreement will be. It says, Behold, the days will come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. I will put my teachings in their minds and I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. People will not have to teach their neighbors and relatives to know the Lord because all people from the least in Important to the most important will know me. The message is from the Lord. I will forgive them for the evil things they did. I will not remember their sins. I want you to know this morning that God won't remember your sins. God is not like the devil that wants to bring up what you did yesterday. God is not like Satan that wants to bring up what you did last year. God don't do be reminding you of the dirt that you did in your life. When you confess your sin, Jesus is righteous to forgive you of your sin. And then he throw them in the trash bin and never to bring them up again. I'm so thankful that God don't remind me of my sin. I'm sure there's some sin that I have totally and completely forgotten. And I'm so thankful that when I sit down with my Lord, you don't know, start with dirt. You remember what you did in 1969? And then uh, remember in 1972 when you did X, Y, and Z? Now, these ain't real dates. I'm just, I'm just picking them out because I certainly can't remember. I was a little boy back in them days. But, but, but you get the point of what I'm saying. I am so glad uh, that Jesus uh, does not bring up my sins, uh, that they're gone forever. Every vile thing you've said, every selfish act you've committed, every person that you could have helped but you refused, every wicked thought that you had, God says he will not remember. Amen. Hallelujah. We've got somebody, we've got people that remember everything that you do. But our sins, our vileness, and everything that we did, it was nailed to the cross and it was crucified with Jesus. Somebody just say amen right now. Amen. And we cannot even begin to understand the horrors of this kind of death. 
We can't comprehend sitting uh, laying, laying, being uh, 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 put on the cross. Now, now, as black folks in America, we, we do, the Bible declares uh, uh, um, uh, um, a curse to him who is hanging from a tree, it tells us in, 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 in Psalms. And, and so, as black folk in America, we certainly can have experienced uh, uh, some, because we had our people hanging from trees all up and down in this country at one time. And so we certainly can, have, but none of us can really fully comprehend being crucified up on the cross. Still, his body was broken for us in Calvary. In fact, he came to this world for that very reason. He was born for this, to tell people about the truth. That's why he came into the world. And everyone who belongs to the truth listens to him. The very fact that God came in flesh, put in a human body, it's evidence for his love for us. He didn't have to do any of that, brothers and sisters. He could have stayed in his own abode. He could have stayed in heaven. He didn't have to come down to this filthy, disgusting earth to do the things that he did. But he came down willingly for you, and he came down for me. He gave up everything. Even his place with God, he accepted the role of a servant, uh, appearing in human form, doing life as a man. Uh, he humbled himself by being fully obedient to God, even when that caused his death, death on the cross. The fact, brothers and sisters, that he willingly gave up the body on the cross for us, says that everything that needs to be said about the love for his sinners. Christ died for us when we were unable to help ourselves, when we weren't able to do anything for ourselves, we, when we were yet sinners, when we were living against God, uh, but just at the right time, Christ died for us. You see, very few people will die to save the life of someone else, uh, even if it's for a good person. Uh, someone might be willing, amen, to die for an especially good person, but Christ, uh, he died for us while we were still sinners, and by this, God showed how much he loved us. And what kind of message did the cross send to us, brothers and sisters? Yeah. This is the supreme message that God loves sinners and he gave himself for them on the cross. And if the message is the message of a friend, uh, the Bible declares that when you're coming to the saving grace of Jesus Christ, you're not a stranger anymore. You are a friend now. And, and, and God will tell you what he's about to do because that's what we do. We call up our buddies. We call up our boys. We call up our girls and we holler at one another. Praise be to God. If you were a stranger, huh, I wouldn't be calling you up, but I call you up. And just like that, Jesus is your friend. So Jesus can call you up and tell you what he's doing right in his word of God. Amen. And that's what I want us to remember this morning as we take the bread and, the, and, and, and our place and, and, and place it in our mouths this morning as we partake of the wine that represents the blood of God. You see, even Jesus took communion before he hit it to the cross. Even Jesus took communion before he hit it to the cross. He said, let this cup pass by me, even Jesus. And then in verse 25, it's a message in the payment of his sacrifice. Was it not enough? Brothers and sisters, for Jesus to have just died? Uh, absolutely not. Jesus had to die through the shedding of his blood, you see, because the whole purpose of his death, brothers and sisters, was to provide an atonement of sin. Uh, and the word atonement means a covering. Could God the mighty, for atonement to take place, blood had to be shed. Without the shedding of blood, there will be no remission. So Jesus didn't come just to cover sin. He came to take sin away. The law says that almost everything must be made clean by blood. Sin cannot be forgiven without a blood sacrifice. So communion this morning, brothers and sisters, is a spiritual cleanser to flush the spiritual junk out your system. Somebody needs to say amen. Blood sacrifice has been God's law for Israel through the years. Literally millions of, of animals have been offered as sacrifices, but not a single sin was paid for when those was offered. Christ, by his wants and for all sacrifice, accomplished that very thing. Uh, Jesus Christ did the thing God wanted him to do. And because of that, we are made holy through the sacrifice of Christ's body. Christ made the sacrifice one time enough for all time. Amen. Every day, 
The priests stand. They, they stand and they, they do their religious service, ser uh, uh, service. And again and again, they offer the same sacrifices which can never be taken, uh, uh, which can never take away sins. Praise be to God. But Christ uh, offered only one sacrifice for sins, and that sacrifice is good for all time. And then he sat down right hand side of God. Could God the mighty. After he uh, saved us of our sins, uh, he returned back to his glory. He went back to the right hand side of God where he was before and where he sits now. So Christ was offered as a sacrifice one time to take away the sins of many people. And he will come, brothers and sisters, a second time not to offer himself for sin. He will come a second time to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. Man, what did God. Jesus, what Jesus did, brothers and sisters, when he died was to provide you and me a perfect avenue of salvation for all who would come to join him by faith. Good God Almighty. God made a road for you and me. God made a way out of no way. We were destined for hell. We were destined to go someplace else. But Jesus, uh, he came along uh, and he changed the story. Uh, I was on my way uh, to 666 Hell Boulevard. Good God Almighty. But God, uh, he changed my road and now I'm going to heaven and there is a mansion. Uh, there is a place that hands have not seen. Eyes have not uh, uh, Imagine, mind can't even think about uh, 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 that God has made for you and me. Amen. Our address was changed. Amen. We got a vacant spot in hell now. Good God, the mind. And that vacant spot was reserved for me. That vacant spot was spirit reserved for you. Now somebody else is going to take that spot. Good God, the mind. Because when you come into the saving grace of Jesus Christ, you are saved and you are put away forever and ever and ever. Good God, the mind. And that's what we want, brothers and sisters. The Bible declares that you know that in the past, the way that you lived, you was useless. Uh, it was a way of life you learned from those who lived before you. And, you and, and who was that? That was the mama. That was daddy. I learned so many negative things from my daddy. Good God Almighty. Because so much is caught instead of taught. You see, because kids are always watching you. You think they're not watching what you're doing, but they see all the sneaky stuff, too. They see the lying. They see when you tell somebody you're not home, but you are home. They see when you got money, but you say you don't. They see you're lying. And so we catch things instead of being taught things. Free, free. But you were saved. Hallelujah from that way of living. Oh, good God Almighty. You were saved from that way of living. Somebody needs to say amen. You were saved. Set aside for that kind of living. You ain't got to live like that no more in your life. You were bought, but not with things that ruin like gold and silver. You were bought with the precious blood of Christ's death. It was a pure and perfect sacrificial lamb. And then I want you to hear again the words of Luke 22 and 19. Jesus said that, that, that he was about to, what, what, he, what he was about to do on the cross was for you, good God the mighty. The bread is my body that I am giving for you. Uh, what he did was to forever satisfy the just demand uh, of God for sin. Uh, for because the payment, in other words, the wages for sin is death, but God gives up the free gift or the free life forever, eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. He died. In our place. We needed to be there, brothers and sisters. He died in our place. The atoning sacrifice. The perpetuation for our sins. Uh, his death pays the penalty and removes God's anger from us. And I don't know about you, but I don't want God to be angry with me. And not only our sins, but the sins of all the people that have ever walked on the place, on the face of the planet Earth. If you trust in him. God gave Jesus as a way to forgive people's sins through their faith. God can forgive them because of the blood sacrifice of Jesus for their sins. God gave Jesus to show that he always does what is right and what is fair. Amen. We've got a God of justice. We ain't got a God that, that can be bribed. We ain't got a God that can, somebody, can, a lawyer can go in and, and talk some smack to him and, and God might change his mind about you. God is a fair God. He is a God of justice. Good God the mighty. He is a great God and he will do what is fair in your life. Amen. Amen. When people don't come into the saving grace of Jesus Christ, God loves you so much, he won't make you do it. 
He's not going to make you do anything. And at the end of your life, he will allow you to go where you chose when you were living. Yeah, yeah. Amen. That's what he do. That's the kind of God that we have. He's, he, I, I, I hate when people say God is a gentleman, but I understand what they're saying. He's gentle. Praise be to God. He's a gentle God. Hallelujah. But his wrath will hurt you too. I want you to know he will put that holy foot where it needs to go sometimes. Somebody needs to say amen this morning. Amen. Amen. God worked all this out in a way that allows him to judge people fairly and still make right any person who has faith in Jesus. See, Jesus didn't just die to pay off the devil. He died to satisfy God. Amen. He gave himself in our place. Uh, come on now. You should have been there. You should have did that time. You should have been that life. You should have got that life sentence. Uh, but your boy went to hell for you. You, you. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Your boy is doing 10 to 15 right now. And he's keeping his mouth shut. It should have been you. Could God the mighty. It should have been you locked up in that D.C. jail. But your, but, but, but God, hallelujah, he, he, he released you. He let you free. Could God the mighty. He paid the price for your victory and there is victory in Jesus Christ Amen. Christ who had no sin but God made him sin he made him become sin so that Christ we would we could uh, be right with God he suffered could God the innocent of the guilty so the guilty might go free he took our place Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I read about a small boy who was constantly late coming home from school and his parents warned him one day that he must be home on time that afternoon, but nevertheless, he arrived late. His mother met him at the door and said nothing. Uh, and at dinner that night, the boy looked at his plate and there was a slice of bread and a glass of water. He looked at his father's full plate and then at his, uh, and then at his father, but, it, but his father remained silent and the boy was crushed. Uh, the father waited for the full impact to sink in, then quietly took the boy's plate and placed it in front of himself. Uh, he took his own plate of meat and potatoes, put it in front of the boy, and smiled at his son. And when that boy grew up to be a man, he said, all my life, I know what God is like by what my father did just that night. I want you to know this morning, God will move things out of your way and put other things in your way. God will move that, that sin out of your life and he will put himself there for you instead because we serve a mighty God. Then in verse 26, we have a message and the promise of his sacrifice. These, these are promises to his saints, uh, the promise of his resurrection. Jesus is said to be the one who died, but who was also returning. And if this is true, then he must still be alive. I want you to know that he's alive, he's alive, he's alive. Jesus is alive. And thank God he is. Thank God we don't worship some statue. Thank God we don't worship some dead God. Thank God that when you go to the grave, the bones have been removed. Thank God that when we get up out the grave, God will meet us there. Thank God that my God is alive. And that's what the Bible says about Jesus. It says, don't be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus, but he ain't there. I know you're looking for him, but he ain't there. He died on the cross. He ain't there. He has risen for death just like he said he would. No one, God says, no one takes my life from me. I give my life freely with God the body. I have the right to give my life, and I have the right to get it back up again. That is what is the Father told me. And so we are to remember that this Savior who died for us on the cross is alive and well today. Amen. Hallelujah. Then we see the promise of his return. We also uh, have to remember that his promise that he is returning to this world someday to receive his people unto himself. Deacon, he's coming to get you. Sister Dawkins, he's coming to get you. Sister Bright, he's coming to get you. Derek, he's coming to get you. I don't know about you this morning, but God is coming to get you. Wherever you are in your life, whatever you've been through in your life, God is coming to get you. God told you 
you. He told you in his word. He says, don't be troubled. Uh, trust in God and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. But God, if I would have I would have told you if it was not true. Uh, and I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And after I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back. I'm going to go and make your bed. I'm going to go and get the wall paint. I'm going to go and get that furniture you like. I'm going to go and hook up your grass. And after I finish all them things, I'm going to come and get you and take you to your new home. Somebody needs to say amen this morning. So brothers and sisters, uh, we want you to know uh, that those who have died, we don't want you to be sad uh, like other people. Those who have no hope, uh, we believe uh, that Jesus died, but we also believe that he arose again. He got back up out the grave, so we believe that God will raise uh, 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 to life through Jesus. Anyone who has died and bring them together with him when he comes. And I want you to know that when he comes back to this earth, he's not coming back how he came the last time. He's coming back with power. He's coming back with might. He's coming back with justice. He's coming back. Good God Almighty, is he coming back? He's returning on this earth as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And every knee shall bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord on earth, above earth, and below the earth. Uh, everywhere you are uh, in the universe, uh, Jesus is Lord. Uh, he is King of Kings. Uh, he is Lord of Lords. Uh, he is the only one. Uh, he is God the mighty. He is. Uh, but listen, I'll tell you the secret. He said that we will all not die, uh, but we will be a change. Uh, it would only take a second. Good God the mighty. But we will change uh, as quickly as our eye blink. Uh, try to measure the time that your eye blink. Uh, God says we will change. Uh, and this will happen uh, when that last trumpet blow. Uh, I don't know about you. Uh, I ain't listening uh, for, 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 for the president. I ain't listening for planes to come. I got my ears open to see if that trumpet uh, is going to hit. I'm looking for that trumpet. Good God the mighty. The trumpet will blow and those who have died will be ready to live forever. Amen. And then we have the promise of rehearsal. We all know that God has called his people to witness to him. And he said to them, go everywhere in the world. God wants us to go everywhere in the world to tell the good news to everybody. So go and make followers or disciples to all the people in the world. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to obey everything that I told you to do. And you can surely, uh, uh, and you can be sure that I will be with you always. When you go and do these things, brothers and sisters, God says that he will be with you always. Now you may not be able to travel to China. You may not be able to travel to Africa. You may not even be able to travel to the West Coast. Uh, but we have ways uh, through our ministry, through the missionary ministry, and through the new radio ministry that God is birthing in my mind. Don't worry about it. It ain't coming yet to be able to reach people all over the globe for the cause of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what God told us to do. God never instructed us to be insulated and just be on ourselves right here and just have our own little party of all our own little people. We don't want nobody else to come. This is our building. Don't nobody come. This is my church. God ain't never said that in the Bible whatsoever. He told you to go out to, to make disciples. He told you to preach the word, to teach the word, to baptize in his name. When we gather in this place this morning, and partake of the Lord's Supper, we have the opportunity to make a united, to make a corporate statement concerning our faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our service of this meal, brothers and sisters, is an opportunity to tell others about his death, uh, to tell others about his resurrection, uh, to his return, and his invitation to them to come to him for salvation. Amen. And then, brothers and sisters, there is a promise given to the sinner. Implied in the message of the Lord's Supper is an invitation for lost people to turn from their sins and embrace the Savior, good God Almighty. After all, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, his second coming are all for the purpose of accomplishing redemption in the lost sinners. A uh, 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 lost friend, uh, uh, those that don't know Jesus Christ, I want you to know this morning the cross is for you. Uh, it, it is for you. If you not know Jesus, if you have not accepted the Lord Jesus in your life, uh, the cross is for you. The empty tomb is for 
you. Uh, God's invitation to you is to come to him by faith and be saved. The Bible declares, uh, come to me, all of you who are tired. Uh, are you tired this morning? Are you sick of the way the world is going? Are you sick of the jobs that you're getting? Are you sick of fussing on the metro? Are you sick of people busting in line? Are you sick of the high prices? Are you sick of all of it? God says, come to me, those that are sick and worried and burdened with the heavy burden that you have been forced to carry. You see, we've been forced to carry some of these burdens. God says, I will give you rest. Uh, if you're lost and you need a savior, I invite you to come to Jesus today. The door is open and the way is clear. If you want to come to Jesus today, you need not fear that he will turn you away. And all, and, and you will not fear, God won't turn you away. All those the Father gives to me will come to you. And whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. God won't drive you away. Before an NBA game, brothers and sisters, the team and the staff need a pregame meal. And they have a spread laid out on the team as the team sits down to eat in fellowship. And this is the meal that they eat together just before they go into battle and face the enemy. The pregame meal provides them the nutritional value, brothers and sisters, needed in order to wage war on the field against folks who are trying to stop them. And when you come to the communion table this morning and eat the bread and drink the cup, it is to give you power. Hallelujah. You need uh, to fight your spiritual enemy. Could God the mind. So communion is designed to help you to enter the world differently because you entered it with the power from on high. Uh, you got the power from God this morning. Hallelujah. As we end, we've heard the message in the meal. Now it's time to heed the message and respond to it. For the Lord's people, it's time to examine our hearts and to be sure we have dealt with our sins and failures. It is time for us to bow before the Lord in repentance and humility as we ask him to prepare us to meet him at the table. For any lost people who might be here today, it is a time for you to consider your destiny. Consider what will happen to you, brothers and sisters, when you die. Consider what will happen when you close your eyes for the last time. Don't just think about it because let me just tell you, death is only a heartbeat away. Death is only a car accident away. Death is only a subway train away. Death is only an airplane crash away. Death is only a disease away. Death, your heart can stop breathing at any time. You want to be prepared, good God Almighty. And you don't want to wait till your last moments to ask Jesus to come into your life. You better get it right because you might not be able to speak. You might not be able to talk. You might not be able to get your thoughts together in those last moments. So while you're living right now, you want to ask Jesus to come in your life. Would you ask him this morning? Would you ask him to come in your life? Do you want to go to heaven when you die or do you want to go to hell? If you've ever been saved, you can receive. If you've never been saved, uh, you can receive the forgiveness and the salvation through the blood of Jesus today. It will come to you and come to you by faith. Amen. Let us pray. And Father, we thank you today for the body that was broken for us and the blood that was shed for our sins. We thank you that we are counted worthy of partaking of this ordinance. And Father, I pray that those under the sound of my voice would heed these words because the message is truly in the middle. Yeah. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give God some praise wherever you are. <laughs> let me say real quick that if you do not know Jesus, let the day be the day of your salvation. The Bible declares all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Brothers and sisters, we're only here to get people into heaven. We're here to love folks. We're here to, to teach them about Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And if you're one of those people today that don't know, my pastor asked me years ago when we first met on a job interview. He says, Derek, if you were to die today, do you know you're going to heaven? And if you got any hesitation anywhere to that question, then you don't know. And let me pose that question to you today. If you were to die today, are you 100% sure, beyond a reasonable doubt, and when you open your eyes, you'll be in the bosom of God. And if you're not, you need to make your way up here. You need to get saved today. You need to make sure before you leave here, you have the covering of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Bible declares all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But the Bible doesn't make you jump through hoops in order to be saved. Salvation is by faith and faith alone. The Bible says if you, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus died, you will be saved. God says confession with your mouth 
and believe in your heart that Jesus died. died. If you prayed this prayer, God, I'm a sinner. And I believe that you died, that you rose, and that you're alive today. I repent for my sins. I repent for my wicked ways. And I turn towards you. Would you come into my heart today, Lord God, and teach me thy ways. And if you prayed that prayer this morning, and if you meant it in your heart, by faith, God has accepted you into the kingdom of God. The angels are hooping and hollering right now as we speak. The Bible declares that every angel will hoop and holler. They will shout hallelujah when somebody comes into the saving grace of Jesus Christ. What about you this morning? Would you come? Maybe you've been in the word of God, and maybe you've not been in church for a while. And maybe it's time for you to return. I want you to know this morning, you left God. God didn't leave you. Would you come back to God? Maybe you need a church home. Maybe you just are in need of prayer. Whatever it is this morning, you can come right now. The doors of the church are open. Would you come this morning? Would you come? Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Somebody give God some praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to prepare ourselves for communion this morning. We talked about communion a little bit just now, but as we prepare for communion, let me speak just a few more words about it. Communion, also known as the Lord's Supper, is mentioned in the New Testament books of the Bible and refers to the acts of faints and remembrance of the death of Christ and our relationship through the new covenant. It is also called, called the Lord's Table, the Eucharist, but it's most commonly known as communion. Scripture tells us, brothers and sisters, that communion is a permanent ordinance. There's only two ordinances in the Bible. That would be baptism and communion. God says that this is a personal, a, 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 a common, a, a, a permanent ordinance and command that is set in place by Jesus Christ that he comes again. The first communion took place during the Passover feast as Jesus ate with his disciples. The act of communion uses bread to symbolize the body of Jesus and wine to represent his blood. As we take communion, the purpose is to remember his sacrifice on the cross, examine ourselves and confess our sins and proclaim him as Lord and Savior. Matthew 26 and 27 puts this, uh, Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 to 27 puts it this way. It says, while they were eating, Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup and when they had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out uh, for many in the forgiveness of sin. I tell you, I will not drink from this cup. I will not drink from this, uh, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister Dawkins.
the body of Jesus Christ that was broken for you and I. This is the wine that represents the blood that was shed for our sins. Let us eat and drink together. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus.